Welcome to the Blessed Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raquel Tolson, and this podcast is here to help you experience being blessed that transcends a mere hashtag. Because you know I'm a believer that being blessed is, is a mindset. You have to make a daily decision to be blessed. So if you're ready to be encouraged, enlightened, and entertained, then you are in the right place. I'm broadcasting on WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, a nonprofit charitable radio broadcast with the mission to empower, encourage, and educate, which is why I'm on it. (laughs) If you are enjoying the Blessed Podcast, please, 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 please go to wwwwytv 7 dot o-r-g and hit the donate button every ten dollars help we are sponsored by tosin's publishing easter is coming up so go get Ren's affirmation god is good and so am i for your children for your grandchildren hey because easter is all about what jesus taught us jesus was murdered because he was telling us how that we were god and you know Anyway, we're going to talk about that next week. All right. All right. Anyway, we are still in March. We are celebrating women. And I have with me Jocelyn Williams. I am so excited. She is a wife, a mother of three, pastor, author, motivational speaker, image consultant, business owner, and asset coach. I mean, she just got so much going on, y'all. She just got so much going on. She is making history in her community, in her family. So welcome, Jocelyn, to Blessed. Hi, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here, excited to be on the broadcast, honored (laughs) to be here. So thank you for having me. Let me just share with this, because last week I had somebody that I knew as a teenager, and this week it's the same thing. I knew Jocelyn as a teenager. We went to New Destiny Christian Center in Orlando, Florida together. Let me tell y'all, I am so proud of the woman she has become. I can't say that I'm a part of it, but I know that we... We were in the children's ministry, my mother and I, we were in the youth ministry, not just children's ministry, the youth ministry, and we really worked a lot with the youth in New Destiny. And Jocelyn, we were talking before we got on at your dad, Gabe. Her father has an um, auto mechanic shop, mm-hmm. and my mother felt like that was her son, because if anything <laughs> ever happened to her car, she was like, Gabe. I need, and it was, he didn't have, she didn't have to make appointments for real. If she called, he was like, I'm coming to get it, That's come right. over, whatever. He was always there for her. And so, you know, your he's family. The same. He's the same person. Is like, he? When you see him, he's the exact same. Oh my gosh. We I don't even think he aged. It's, it's, yeah. I don't even think he <laughs> He's the same humorous person. Still have the auto repair shop. He's yeah. a bundle of joy. <laughs> well, the apple don't fall far from the tree. Thank you. Because he, you, I get it from my daddy. Let me mama. just say this: your mama is a. She was amazing too. I used to love her, and she gave good hugs. Yes, she did. She <laughs> does. <laughs> I, I haven't been able to hug her in a while, but she used to give me good hugs. So. Yes. Yes. But so let's talk about you, Jocelyn. You okay. got a lot of stuff going on. I have a lot going on. I do have a lot going on. <laughs> First, let's talk about. COVID because COVID is like huge and your family went through a COVID scare. Yes. Talk about did. that. I will talk about it. Um, it was la- well, we're almost coming up on a year, but it was last year around June, July, um, of course, when the pandemic hit. And so uh, we were staying home. We had been staying home for almost maybe two, three months. Um, and it, the, the very few people that were coming over because we transition to having virtual church at our home. So we had a studio. Um, and so when people were coming in, we made sure we did temperature checks. They were washing their hands. Everybody wore masks. We were doing everything that we could to ensure that we were protected and just being wise. And so um, after two months, my husband went to a service to pray. You know, I have to say that because I don't, I don't want it to sound bad, but he went to a service to pray and um, unfortunately, they were not practicing social distancing and they weren't strict with it. And so passing the mic and all of that. And that's where um, we found out that he, you know, got the uh, COVID. And so it started off with him, you know, having a high fever of 104. 
I don't know if you're like me, but it take a minute for us to go to the hospital. I'll call for three months before I go to the hospital. I'm gonna try every home remedy, yeah. I'm gonna medicine. I'm doing so we were doing it, and I'm like, 104 is kind of high. Like that's not a hundred. That's 104. Mm-hmm. So we went and I encouraged him to, you know, go check it out because we were still skeptical to go to the hospital as well. Right. And when we went, they said both of his lungs were filled to 90 percent. Um, he had double pneumonia. And uh, so at that point, I did not know that they were going to leave him there in the hospital. So I had to go back home, get some things, then go back to the hospital. So he stayed there for three days, mm-hmm. longest three days of my life. The coughing was like it almost sounded like something was coming up out of him like it was really scary at that point and that's another reason why I just encouraged him to go to the hospital and I, I'm not sure if you you wanted all of the details but I no. just kind of I put mean it in. I just think it, you know because a lot of people we talk about COVID we see it on the news but some of us don't have personal accounts yeah. of what really happened because you know some people still feel like it was fake Right, right. No, it was a real deal. It was a real deal. It, it was a near death experience. Um, I have never seen my husband that week. I've never seen him with that high of a fever. I mean, he was just like, it took strength just to go take a shower. I gave him um, sponge baths because the fever just would not go down at all. And at some point I was, you know, a little nervous and concerned because like you said, in the news, everybody that has COVID is either they end up dying and I was like, I'm not about to lose my husband. So <laughs> right. what are we going to have to do to make sure that this comes together? And, you know, when he's the one that's more stronger spiritually and we still have a church. So it was a transition. It, it was a, a definitely a season for me that um, really challenged my faith. You know, sometimes we can go to church and we hear the word and it's not as relevant to us until you end up in a situation where you realize I got to pull on that word that pastor was talking about and, and pull on my own faith when I don't have anybody else to call. And so uh, we just kind of stayed away from everybody, but we really didn't share it because we didn't want people, you know, to be afraid. And I only needed faith talkers and walkers with me. So of Ooh, course, you just parents, said a lot right there. Yeah. Ooh, we can, you uh, know, we can have a whole interview on just that, that right there. Yes. So my parents Mm -hmm. knew, his parents knew, um, and then we just kept it private and just the ones that I knew that were going to pray, pray us through because you can have faith, but there was still that human side of me that was like, how, how this is going to turn out? Like I was, I was nervous, but I was still like, you know, set my face like Flint and did not move on top of that, because we are virtual church. I was preaching through, uh, up to about a month, every single service. So that's Thursday night. Saturday because we have two two churches and that's on Sunday and so having faith personally and then having to minister to others that are going through their family is dying or their they have COVID that was a very very unique season for me um, but I realized that I was I, I became much more stronger having to minister to others because it encouraged my faith as well like I finished preaching and they're like sending me text messages and like, oh, you know, Pastor Jocelyn, you encourage my faith. I, I encourage my faith. Y'all don't even know what is happening right now. So <laughs> what's in my own home, but just for right. God to be able to use me when I was going through, you know, fighting for my husband, but also to help others, or, you know, it was it was truly a blessing. And he came out winning. And yeah, I was about he, to say, he came out on top. He, he is healthy top. and he's, uh, and praise God for that because I look, and I knew him too when he was a teenager. Yes. <laughs> went to, look, you know what? I think that's just, you know, we might have to come back and talk about that because I want to talk about you. But the fact that you married your best friend, yes, I think that's a testament. It's a, something that people might want to hear because they mm-hmm. all, everybody waiting for this husband and all that stuff. And then the, they probably right there, the spouse is probably right there. Yeah, right there in their face. Yeah, right right there in their face. <laughs> they think, oh, that's just my friend. No, baby, that's who you probably need to marry, right. your friend. Right, Stop looking right. for the, all these duds. Anyway, we're not going to even go on that. We're not. You, That's a whole nother said, segment. <laughs> whole nother segment. You said something that I, and it's, and it's going to lead into, because you were saying that you had, you know, you were the faith and you actually had to walk out that faith. You know what I'm saying? It's like stuff that you have been talking about, you've been memorizing Bible scriptures or whatever, but you actually had to stand on it. You had to actually and walk out on that faith. Yeah. And that's kind of what you teach as an asset coach, right? Right. So talk about that because, you know, I'm a huge believer in it's not enough 
to do. And I think you said it too. It's not enough to just hear the word. We got to be doers of the word. And, and to be a doer of the word, we actually have to believe it deep down inside yes. that, and that it causes us to act on the word. Yes. Well, you know, as a teenager, um, of course, I have a bubbly personality and I love talking to people, but inside I never felt the best about myself. And a lot of that stemmed from I had a severe case of acne. And so it was like it ruled my life. And although people see it, uh, saw it, of course, it's not something that could be hidden. Um, they probably didn't know the extent of how much it bothered me no. because I never showed it, but I, but I always felt it. And so I like to use my acne as an example for other people in their life. Maybe it could be a, a complex that they have about themselves or a sickness that they're dealing with or whatever. That thing, like, it just engulfs your entire life and like I didn't want to take pictures I didn't want to be in front of the camera I didn't want to you know be in I didn't pursue certain relationships because I didn't think that I was qualified I wasn't pretty enough you know I didn't want a whole lot of friends I didn't want to go a whole lot of places and you know again with my personality you probably couldn't tell but it was something of how I felt on the inside and I realized that now as an asset coach, a lot of times where our self our self esteem is hindered is because of how we feel about ourselves, and we view ourselves in that negative light. And because of that, we uh, we it makes us not pursue certain things. Like you may have a dream, you may have a goal, there may be something that you want to do, but you end up not doing it because of how you feel. Like I'm not good enough. I don't have the education, you know, would people listen to me and all of these things play in your mind. And now it causes in this invisible barrier for you to move forward. And so that's as an asset coach, what I come to do is be the alarm clock for people that's been sleeping on their potential. Okay, because when you get that revelation, that's what happened to me. It was like, wait a minute, you can have acne, but you still bomb like <laughs> You you sleeping on all the the, the right. potential, and if I use it in just a it's physical sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I use it in just a physical sense, it was like, okay, well, I don't like my eyes and I don't like my nose, but I'm like, my lips are full. You know, I can wear any color lipstick and I look amazing in it. But I cho <laughs> I chose not to tap into that side because I allowed the negative aspect of the things that I didn't like to not let me embrace the things that I do. And so I use the physical traits as an example of the inward. Stop looking at what you don't like and start cultivating the thing that you are good at. God put you here for a reason. You're here on purpose. And there's something that you can do that nobody else in this world can do. But if you're so busy looking at how what you do does not measure up to somebody else that you admire. You miss out. The world is missing out on what you have to offer. So yes. that's like the general, um, I guess, aspect of where it comes from. Because a lot of us, especially as women, we lock ourselves out of a lot of things because of our own self-esteem. And it's like, yes. then you see somebody else doing it. And you're like, deep down inside, you know you can do it a little bit better. <laughs> But if, if I wasn't, if I wasn't so self-critical, you know, I could really be doing it out there. But while you're sitting there thinking about doing it, somebody else who's doing it halfway is making money on doing it. So it's a, Girl. yeah. So it goes both <laughs> ways where when you realize who you are, one, you get a diff, you have a different swag, a different confidence mm -hmm. that come with that. But at the same time, you start unlocking those gift things that you have yeah. and start pursuing them halfway like i say be scared and do it anyway yeah i'm nervous when i do a lot i'm nervous right now but you'll never know i'm gonna be nervous and do it anyway i'm gonna log on in my nervous state you know so right. don't take the bubble the butterflies in your stomach and you're nervous and your heart is racing as a sign that you shouldn't be doing it do right. it anyway because the more you start conquering those fears and the more you start stepping up to the plate plate you know the phrase face your fear and it'll disappear the more you'll start realizing that when i and in a situation that reminds me of another situation I was in that I was scared about, I will, I, I know that I pushed past it in that one. So I have that right. same strength to keep going in this particular situation. Girl, you done just helped a whole lot of people listening. Hey, I let's go. Was, you done helped a whole lot of people because that was some real talk. Yeah, I'm, we gonna make sure you get her email and, and yes. the website and stuff so y'all can make sure y'all get a hold. If you need an asset coach yes. to help, if you need an alarm clock, Alarm clock, that's it. <laughs> if you need an alarm clock, here she is. Right, and we're not plus and snooze in this season. Like, you got to get up. You got to be serious and wake up. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about your Aspire magazine. What made you do that? Well, I did it because, because I...
do so many different things. <laughs> um, a lot of people, I have different audiences. So okay. um, it allows me to put everything together in one because I do girls trips, I do master classes, I do virtual classes. I have books, I do compilations where um, different women come together and write their story and I create a book out of it and it's a whole experience. So it's so many different aspects and different people. So it just kind of, it highlights uh, my journey throughout the year. And so you can see pictures, so it's vibrant, it's colorful, but not only that, it allows me to share um, the expertise of other people that are in business. So give them another platform. So right. the objective is Instagram is great. Facebook is great, but people still like magazines. They still like reading it. They still like the hard copies. Um, they still like the digital copies. And so to see other women and and there's men involved in the magazine too but thriving and doing what it is that they're doing it causes it's 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 so that it can spark something on the inside of you like if they can do it i can do it too so right. to be a part of it um the, to be a part uh, entrepreneur a part of the aspire magazine you have to at least share some type of expertise within your business so okay. let's say you're a makeup artist you can share um three tips on how to do your eyebrows or something like that so they're always going to get some type of helpful content from mm -hmm. within the magazine but also if you are able to see people like you and i mm -hmm. just out there doing what it is that you know they're called to do so okay okay i love it i'm yeah. excited so you talked about the makeup so it makes me think about your youtube kind of your car vlogs with lady j and you i just seen you know you have like different um youtube videos or you actually are doing makeup you doing all you just do so much. What made you start, especially the car vlogs? Because I thought that was just the cutest little idea. Right. You know, and I haven't done the car vlogs in a while. I'm going to have to bring them back. But <laughs> it was a thing that I did literally one day in the car. And I, the, from the first video, I said, hey, welcome to car vlogs with Lady J. And I was like, is that a title? Is that a thing? And then just kept it going because... Uh -huh. The views were great so i was like well why if it ain't broke just you know keep going and so but the youtube is my way of expressing myself um of course you know i'm a pastor so a lot of times i get like inboxes of people are like i can't believe that you're on youtube and you're a pastor like i'm breaking all stand like i'm stepping outside the box so yeah um, i do makeup because i like to show women that hey you don't have to always have a makeup artist you know i'm had a makeup yeah. artist for, I still have her, um, especially for my major events, but especially with this pandemic, the fact that she did my makeup so many times, I kind of learned how to do my own. Mm -hmm. And I was killing it in virtual life. <laughs> you can tell me nothing. <laughs> but um, so I show different women like how to just do their makeup and just do little simple things, um, hairstyles. Like mm -hmm. I can go to the salon every single week. It's, it's not an issue but right. i do like doing my own hair so i it's kind of like one of those little hobbies and then i show my girls my girls are natural i do their hair too so i'm very hands-on if i'm cooking you know I try to just allow sure. people to come into my life so that it's not just okay well she's a preacher no i do a whole lot i'm a regular person too and right. sometimes people have that thought as pastors like we don't go through anything or or you probably pay to get your makeup done every single day or and people really said that or you pay to get the girls i do all that i'm hands-on with different things so it's a way of getting to know me on a another level but also yeah. i enjoy doing it i like doing product reviews and um for my ladies conference i have um coming up around uh the weekend of mother's day that mm -hmm. i do every year this is actually our 10th year kingdoms oh Next wow World. Yeah, so I do something called Lady J Live, and so I share Lady J tips, so how to wash your synthetic wig and how to get your teeth whiter, like little stuff like oh, that. Oh, I need to watch that, and I need to watch that, because I, you know, I love my wigs, child. Right. Because so I don't want to, yeah, I love it. Oh, I love a wig, too. Don't you? Like, <laughs> I love a wig, too. But I do both. I, I preach on, like, Friday night, and then Saturday is a whole nother person that you're going to get on Saturday where, you know, I share products and stuff like that. So it, I just love it. it gives me an opportunity to just really be me because I like people and I like mm -hmm. to share product and people contact me like, oh, is there a product that I can use for such and such? So I've become that person and I love it. And it keeps life interesting. Like yeah. I'm so appreciative that my husband allows me to do certain things because I hear you know, often that, you know, wives want to do certain things, but maybe their husbands won't let them, especially as a first lady, but right. my husband's very open and he allows me to do that. And 
I appreciate him for that because, you know, it allows me to enjoy life even more. Like I enjoy preaching, but I also enjoy the fact that the things that I want to do, I'm still able to do it and not, you know, judged because of it or feel like I have to scale back. I'm right. not being out there and doing anything out there. That's well, crazy. you know what? And, but that's like, that. a, that's a huge point that we need to point out because just because, and I, and I'm almost don't even want to use the term Christian because, you know, right. but just because you are a lover of God and a follower of the teachings of Jesus Christ does not mean that you're not human. It right. does not mean just because God put you in a position over a flock to, yeah. you know, to teach and feed them doesn't mean that he wanted you to stop being who you are. He right. called you because of who you are. Right, right. And, and you are able to reach people inside the church and outside the church right. because of who you are, not because of you're preaching a word. It's they're drawn because of who you are. I'm sure that there were some people drawn to you teaching them how to wash their synthetic wigs <laughs> and do some makeup. And then they was then they like, oh, I like her. Let me come on and learn what, you know, I want to see what else she's doing. Right. And then they got to hear about God. Right. And that's the whole objective. Like you literally touched on it. Even with asset coaching, um, as an asset coach, it's not I, I don't want it's not um churchy. Like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not a spiritual tone, but I can't get away from the spiritual tone. So you still going like if you're in the class and certain things I say, I may not quote the scripture, but you'll hear the phrase and you already know where I'm coming from. So mm -hmm. I get people that are not churched. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't go to church and I'm like their pastor, but they don't even know it. Because <laughs> the they don't even know it. And so then I just slide that in there. Yeah. And then when we have those one-on-ones, you know, it's always like, they don't know how to describe it. It's like something, something, there's something about you. Like you have yeah. a, you have like an inner glow. That's the Holy Ghost. You don't even know it. No, you don't, even, so you know. don't even know. And so, um, but it gives me an opportunity to witness and, um, I always lead them back to Christ. So I don't present it like, hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in your face. Right. But with what you're seeing, I can't I can't um go around the fact that it's this is all God. The reason why I'm able to yeah. juggle all of the things that I'm doing, this is all God. And when you say that, it's like, oh, I thought it was something that, like, do you wake up early? Like, do you drink a particular drink? Like people, the world don't understand. So they try to pinpoint it with different things. No. Right. It's, a, it's spirit. So, and I tell yeah. people, because I had somebody ask me, well, what about people who don't believe in God? I was like, that's okay. You don't have to believe in him for him to be real. That's right. Oh, no, nah, it's okay. That's I right. Can call, I can call him God, Yahweh, Allah. I can call him universe. I can call him spirit. Whatever. It don't right. matter. It's the same person. It's the same, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. It, it's just so funny. And I'm so glad that you have not allowed religious you know, that religiosity type yeah. thing puts you in a box. And I'm yeah. glad that your husband has not done it all. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there's so many people that are out there because with God, we're supposed to be free. Yeah. But a lot of people, it, they are oh. so bound. Yeah. They're so bound. And I'm like, that's not of God. That's not God. Yeah. God, there's a freedom. And that's God. something that I'm doing. Uh, well, I started it last year and I'm going to do another one this year, mm -hmm. but it's called First Ladies Unite. And um, so it's first ladies from around the uh, city and we come together. So we did it at um, a restaurant and it was just a private setting. It wasn't preachy. I didn't come in there preaching. Like we just had fun, but yeah. it gave me an opportunity to connect with other first ladies because that is something that um, is a struggle for first as a first lady, you know, to connect with others. A lot of times the husbands connect, but just cause, just cause the husbands connect don't mean that I, I, I connect with your wife. You know, right. <laughs> so um, <laughs> uh, it's one of those ways of me being, you know, just more um, open to mm -hmm. friendship because I can, as friendly as I am, I can be a loner. And so it's like, okay, we'll have these moments and then we probably won't talk again and I'll be okay with it. But, you know, just being able, I feel like other first ladies need that too. And I need it as well in, in some yeah, type of way. Um, so it just allows us to connect even more. So I was just piggybacking off of what you said, like as yeah. pastors, preachers, sometimes it's hard to make those connections, but normally it's okay. Well, I'm, if you invited me to come preach, then I'm coming to your church. Or right. if my husband is going to preach, then it's automatic first ladies are going to click and it don't work that way. Right. But in this setting, it's like the pressure is off. You don't have to come. You're not preparing a sermon. Let's eat, let's fellowship and let's get to know each other outside of our church. I know your church name. That's all I want to know. I want to know about you now. Let's talk about you. Right. So, right. I love it. Thing. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So before we only have five minutes left, it went okay. so fast, didn't it? It went fast. 
we tell did. everybody where they can find information about you, your ass, you know, your businesses, your magazine, where can they find you? Well, the best thing to do is to go on my website, which is uh, www.jvwministries.com. And then once you subscribe there, you will receive the emails. So I pretty much uh, keep you up to date with the different events that are coming up. One in particular is for um, business owners. If you want to create a additional income doing something that you're passionate about, it's not an MLM. This is literally, you have to have an idea before you can even sign up for this. But I show you how to turn that idea and monetize it. And so it's a free webinar. So you can go to jbwministries.com and you click register, absolutely free. And it'll be at the end of April, but you'll get information once you subscribe, um, you'll get the information on when it's coming up and we'll keep you posted on that. But that would be the best way. And then of course I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. So um, I can- And on Facebook, how can they on Facebook? On Facebook, I'm Jocelyn Williams. And on Instagram, I'm Lady JVW. Lady JVW. And on YouTube, what is it? On YouTube, I am Lady J Tips. <laughs> so it's youtube.com forward slash Lady J Tips. You got so much going on. I am so very proud of you. Thank you me. are really making history. And a lot of times, this is why I like doing this in March because we think of, when we think of history, we think about people who have gone on and bless them, you know, we and we love them and we do want to teach that history. But there are women making history today, doing yeah. things that like, your kids will talk about to their grandkids yeah. you know that you're doing or that the stuff that you're doing right now people are looking at that and so i appreciate you for your you know doing all the work that you do i am so happy that you and entree everything is fine after that covid yes. thing oh, oh my god. gosh so i'm so happy that we are kind of coming out of that mm -hmm. but one thing i do want is since you're the first pastor that i had on mm -hmm. i just want to say Y'all need to stop all that touch your neighbor stuff. <laughs> and hug well, your neighbor stuff. Just, so, I know I'm that we it. love touching and hugging. <laughs> but you. come on, because somebody was like, well, if y'all go to the grocery store, why can't you go to the church? I said, because the people at the grocery store don't get on there and say, right. hug your neighbor. Give your neighbor a high five. Right. It's that. Right. <laughs> it's well, that my right. husband does a new one. He says an air fist pump. So okay. that's what we do. Yeah, we don't do the touch your neighbor. <laughs> no more touch your neighbor. No more touch your neighbor. <laughs> well, Raquel, thank, I appreciate you having me and just this platform that you're doing and you're sharing. You're awesome all by yourself. Thank and you. so thank you. I'm honored um, that you would even consider me to be on here. So thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for everybody out there listening, I hope that you got something. Well, I, I'm. A, it's not hope. I know you got something there were some tips in there there was some you know some things that jocelyn shared that should bless you and if it didn't bless you you know somebody that you like you know what so and so should hear this make sure you send this link so so and so can hear this okay right. <laughs> and until next week remember what god has done for others healing from covid giving business ideas he can do the same thing for you until next week, be blessed. 80% of women will develop a pelvic health condition at some point in their lives. There is relief. There is hope. The Pelvic Floor Store, your resource for personal health.